this video, we're going to look at vector projection, where we take one vector and we project it onto the line spanned by another vector, or where we take one vector and we project it onto a plane spanned by two vectors. Okay. So um, suppose we have a vector d. And another vector m. And we want to project d onto the line spanned by m. So the way we do a projection is we drop a perpendicular from the tip of the vector d down to the vector m. So this is at 90 degrees. And the vector that goes from the origin to d to that uh, point of where the per perpendicular drops that's the one that we call the projection. So um, you can see from the graph that uh, the projection, uh, how should I write, I'll write it in black, projection onto M of D is going to be a vector which is parallel to M, right? It's along the same direction as M, so it's gonna be just a multiple of M. It's just a rescaled version of M. So we'll write it as some scalar T multiplied by the vector m. And I guess I should have underlined this one to distinguish between vectors and scalars. All right, so then, then the question is, how do we find t? And the, the key to finding t is that this, um, the definition of the projection is that we have a perpendicular dropped along here. So if I define this vector here, e, and I define E to be the difference between D minus the projection then I know that E is perpendicular to M and so if I rewrite E in this way D minus TM then I know that um, the dot product of E with M should be zero. So the next step is to find T, is to take the dot product of E with M and set it equal to zero. And then we'll get an expression for T. So because E is perpendicular to M, we know that E done with M is equal to zero. And so that's what we're gonna do. We set E dot M to zero. That means that by um, dot by M, the both sides, I have equal to D dotted with M minus T M dotted with M. And since the whole thing is equal to zero, I can now solve for t. The d dotted with m is a scalar, m dotted with m is a scalar, t is a scalar. So provided that m dot m is not zero, then I have t is equal to d dotted with m divided by m dot m. And so the projection is then following p into m of d is equal to, and then for t, I put in uh, this expression. So m times, and I will rewrite, um, well, let me do it in two steps. d dot with m over m dot with m. And I'm gonna rewrite it in the following way. m over n, n dot m is the length of m squared, so that's m squared. And then d dot m is the same thing as m dot d. So this becomes m dot with d. Or, to be right again, the even more convenient way, I can um, do m divided by m here and m divided by length of m again. So this is the length squared. So this becomes m over m times m over m prime d. All 
right, the dot product can be written as the transpose of m multiplied by d, and it becomes like that. And now I can also use the fact that m divided by its length becomes a unit vector. So this expression just becomes m hat times m hat primed times d. And this, this here is what uh, we call the projection operator. So this is a matrix. This is the projection. operator. So it acts on a vector and it returns another vector. right? So D is a vector D over here and you multiply by this matrix with D and you will get that M hat prime D is going to give you a scalar and you multiply M hat to get a vector along this direction. So M hat would be uh, similar to M but of unit length. Okay so I think it would be nice to uh, go ahead and code this in MATLAB. So I've uh, created an example, which I'm going to show you now. So, um, well, first I'll show you the, the vector plot routine that we had before. I modified it a little bit. Uh, I got rid of the labels for the axes, and I had an extra text um, command inside the vector plot routine that I wrote last time, the little wrapper for the quiver, and I added um, a text which is passed in as an argument, s. So s is a string, and that's going to be the name of the vector we're plotting, and so it will make the plots easier to understand. All right, so the, the script I wrote to illustrate the vector projection is called project.m. It's over here. So okay, so just to pick a particular examples example, uh, the vector m is just the one one vector. The matrix that projects this one over here, m hat dot m hat, is just m m primed divided by m m prime. So it doesn't look the same. So maybe I should change it. So let me make it look more like what I have in the notes. So projection matrix P is going to be m or one over m prime star m. That's uh, the same as the length squared, m squared over here. And then multiplied by m times m primed. This is a projection matrix. And then this we multiply with d. So d, the vector d in this particular example here, uh, I picked the vector minus 1, 2, just to have something. And now here I would multiply uh, the fitted model would be the projection matrix multiplied with D. So I defined, so to make the MATLAB code consistent, the, vector, the matrix P is defined to be, um, how did I write it? Yeah. M, M primed over M primed M. And this, the, the denominator is um, a scalar, so I can just write it as one over like this. So it could have been, it could also be written maybe more neatly um, just by dividing. I, would, I think that's the way I had it, m star, m prime star m. All right, so we'll have a look at that, what that matrix is. So this is the projection operator, the projection operator. You'll notice that I gave these uh, names M for model, P for projection, D for the data, F for the fitted model, and E for the difference between the data and the fitted model for the error model. And these are meant to be subject su suggestive of the kinds of things we're going to do with the projection um, uh, geometry and linear algebra. All right, so let's run it. Project, oh, I need to save it project and I get this plot here let me make it bigger so you can see what's going on so this is my uh, data D over here the black one and M is the model M vector F is the projection in blue and labeled by F for fitted and D the green one is 
no, uh, that one, oh, I guess it's labeled, they have the same tip. So there's D and E. The green one is E, which is meant to be the error, which is the difference. So D is, is this, the E, I mean, is this, this distance here. Is the same one as this one. These are parallel. Oh, you can't see that. E. This one is E. It's perpendicular to M, and it's it's a difference between the data and the fitted model. So it's the same thing what I wrote in the script as D minus F. All right, so we can look at what the matrix P looks like. So the matrix P is just this matrix of ones, uh, a halves, one half everywhere. And um, it's a two by two matrix. And since we're just projecting onto a line, um, the matrix necessarily has only uh, components in what direction and it's in the direction parallel to M. So both columns are parallel to the one one vector, which is the model in this case. So if we were projecting onto a plane, which we'll do in a little bit, then the projection matrix would have columns that are um, not all parallel to each other, not just multiples of each other. All right, so we can continue along this line um, and do now projection of a vector in three-dimensional space projected onto a plane. So let's do that. We're going to consider the case in which we project a vector onto a plane as opposed to just a line. So suppose this is the, the plane. Of course, it extends out to infinity, but I'm just going to draw it as a flat sheet like this, and it's going to be a plane is spanned by two vectors. It has two dimensions, so I'm going to call the vectors that span it m1 and m2. So these two vectors, they live on this plane. So m1 and m2 are both um, 3 by 1 column vectors. vectors, just to be concrete, 3 by 1. And then I'm going to create a vector D, or assume I have a vector D. And this one is also a 3 by 1. D is a 3 by 1 um, column vector. But it lives off the plane, so it has a component off the plane. And to do the projection, we do the same thing that we did last time. We drop a perpendicular. So this is 90 degrees. And then the result here is the called vector F. And the vector from the tip of the projection back to the D vector, we're going to call that E, just like before. All right, so E is defined as uh, D minus F, right? plus, because F plus E is D. So if you subtract F from D, you get back E. All right, so the projection P onto the space spanned by M1 and M2. So let me introduce some new notation. M is defined as a matrix with two vectors, two columns, M1, and M2. So if I stick the two columns uh, side by each other and create a matrix, this will be a 3 by 2 matrix. And so I'm projecting onto M. And that's the plane span by the two columns of M, M1 and M2. Or D. All right, so this is going to be what I'm calling F. And F it lives on this plane, and M1 and M2 span the plane. So that means that F is going to be some linear combination of M1 and M2, so some multiples. So that means that F is equal to alpha 1 times M1 plus alpha 2 times M2. And to get the projection, we need to find out what alpha 1 and alpha 2 are. And for that, we'll use the same thing as the last time. We know that E is perpendicular to the plane, so that means that E is perpendicular to any vector on this plane, and in particular, it's perpendicular to M2 and M1. So that means that M1 dotted with 
with E is equal to zero because those two have to be perpendicular. And similarly, M2 dotted with E is also equal to zero. So I can rewrite this one here uh, to make it for convenience. I can rewrite it like this, M, or before I go to add one extra step, M1, M2, and a vector alpha 1 and alpha 2, right? If you remember how to think about matrix multiply, it's the first component times the first column plus the second component times the second column. And, and that means that the, this um, can be further rewritten in the following way, M, which is this matrix here, times a vector alpha. So alpha is a two by one column vector. And so this, this, these two equations together, if they get combined together, this is, uh, these two can be rewritten in the following way, m1 primed e equals 0, and m2 primed e equals 0. And so this, since m1 is a column, it is now a row, and m2 is primed is now a row. So these two transpose vectors are both rows. And so we can stick them together, one on top of the other, m1 primed and M2 primed times E equals zero. So, and this is the same thing as M prime E. So over here, M1 and M2 are the columns. Over here, M1 and M2 are the rows. And so if we take the transpose of M, we turn the rows, the columns into rows for each case, and we get this matrix. And so this here is um, it's basically a two by two, uh, zero, zero vector. So you can check that the, the matrix, the, the dimensions work out. So remember M is a three by two. So M is a three by two. M primed. I transpose this, then I get a 2 by 3, and E is a 3 by 1, and so the whole thing together becomes a 2 by 1, which is what I have over here. And so this is equal to 0. And so to find out what um, alpha 1 and alpha 2 is, I will um, replace E by the difference between uh, E, the difference between D and F. So my equation becomes M transpose D minus F equals zero. And then for F, I know that F is M times alpha. So what I get is M transpose D minus M transpose f, I one extra step, and now I'll sub in what f is, m transpose d minus m transpose, and what is f? f is m alpha, m alpha equals zero. Okay, and so um, now it's just a matter of solving uh, this for alpha. So m is known, D is known, it's the, this vector, and the only unknown in this equation is alpha. So we have this equation here. M prime M times alpha is equal to M prime D. This is an important equation. This is called the normal equations. And although I've defined it in this case uh, for a three-dimensional D vector projected onto a two-dimensional space to give it a geometrical interpretation, uh, this would work for M living in any dimension. So that three here could be expanded to any dimension. And the, the algebra would work out to be the same.
And in fact, and, and the plane could be, we could, if we went to, let's say, um, 10 dimensions, then the plane might be a hyperplane with more than two vectors in this high dimensional space. So this seems quite abstract from a geometric point of view, but from a data analysis uh, perspective is quite natural, where D, for example, might be some time series that we have of, of measurements for over many years. So D might be several hundred, uh, maybe a vector of 100 by one, for example, if we had a long time series with 100 measurements, 100 years of measurements, and we want to fit the trend onto this uh, model. And so the trend is is going to correspond to a vector in this plane, a one-dimensional vector. All right, it's kind of abstract for now. Um, you will um, it'll become less abstract when we do some applications. All right, so the, the let's check that all the dimensions work out. So m is a three by two, m prime is a two by three. So this this thing out in front here, m prime m. So m prime m. This is now a two by two matrix. And what about m prime d? m prime times d is going to be well. M is a two, is a three by two, and d is a three by one. M prime is a two by three, so this will multiply correctly, and I will be left with a two by one. This is a two by one vector. So everything works out nicely, right? This is a two by two multiplying a two by one is equal to a two by one. So it's two equations and two unknowns. And we can now solve it. This, we can solve the two equations as two unknowns, and we're gonna do it in MATLAB right now. So let's do this example. All right, so let's see um, what this gives us in MATLAB. Uh, continue. And so here is uh, the projection plot for the vectors I picked. So in this case, uh, for the three-dimensional case, my two vectors, uh, m1 and m2 over here. So this is m1 minus 1, 1, 0. So m1 and m2. The matrix M is the two columns, one beside the other. The projection matrix, which I didn't show um, down here, I'll do it in a little bit, is uh, m times m primed m backslash m prime. So we'll explain this in a little bit. F is the the projection. It's this one. And it's the black one over here. And uh, uh, then E is the difference between the data and the projection, so the error. And now these are plotted over here. So let's see if I could rotate it around so you get a better view. So the, the black curve, the black vector, how can I get it right? I guess that this is good. Okay, so this black one, this is D. The blue one that lies in the plane is F. This is M1 along here, and M2 along here, and then E is over here. And so E is perpendicular to the plane, so I don't know if you can see that, right? It's at 90 degrees. If I could rotate it again. All right, so where does this formula come from? P is M. So the projection in the M is M times alpha. And if I solve for alpha, what do I get? From over here, I get alpha. Oh, let me move this. So right, M times alpha is F. So alpha, which I solve from this equation, is M times M. inverse m prime d. And so the full projection in the end is, uh, bring this up here, is f 
is equal to p times d and it is equal to um, m times alpha which is m prime m in MATLAB the inverse would become a backslash and then m prime d and this is the two coefficients the two alphas and so this bit here the projection is then there for this one so p that's m times this matrix is what I'm calling P. And I think that matches what I have. Yes. So this is the projection operator. And you notice that this uh, expression would be correct even if I had the, um, my vectors were in an n-dimensional space. And I can incre inc increment the number of columns in M to 3, 4, 5, 6, or more. As long as the num number of um, columns in M is less than the total dimensional of the space. So if my data D lives in a three-dimensional space, then my matrix M should have two or fewer columns. But if D, for example, to do the example from a while ago, was a hundred by one uh, dimensional vector representing a time series, then so long as the number of um, columns in M was less than the total number of data, less than a hundred, so 99 or less, then um, I could potentially be okay. So it, it would depend um, how many degrees of freedom there really is in the data. But in principle, you can go that high. All right, so that's um, what I have for projections. Uh, in the next video, we're going to do some examples using some data.